Hello and welcome back to the next part of the Fanny Crosby story. If you remember from last time, Fanny was about to go to the doctor's office. She's about five years old at this time and her mother had been saving up money so that she could go and get her eyes examined and maybe she could see. Fanny was so excited when she heard the news, she forgot the part that her mother said that it might hurt. So our story begins today with Fanny sitting in the doctor's office. Fanny held her mother's hand tightly. A man named Dr. Mott and another eye specialist examined her eyes. Fanny remembered her mother's words that the procedure might hurt. Suddenly she was afraid. She listened as the doctor told her mother that Fanny could see light and some bright colors, but nothing else. The scars on her eyes could not be removed. Poor child, Dr. Mott said kindly. I'm afraid your eyes will never see. Fanny's mother covered her face with her hands and wept bitterly. Don't cry, Mama, Fanny whispered. She hugged her mother. Let's go home. Fanny was eager for the boat ride home. She liked hearing the waves slap against the boat. The cool river breezes blew her hair in every direction, and the captain told her the exciting stories about the sea. But Fanny's mother was quiet and sad. Fanny thought to herself, I can't see, and Mommy wants me to. She tapped her feet on the deck and watched the reds and oranges in the sky. Hour after hour, as the waves lapped the boat, they seemed to say, Fanny, be brave. Fanny, be brave. Happier days are coming. One night, as Fanny knelt to pray by Grandma's chair, in a puzzled voice she asked, Why didn't God answer Mama's prayer so I could see? Grandma stroked Fanny's hair as she answered, God can do anything, child. He gives us what is best. We must never want anything that does not agree with his plan for us. God has something special for you to do, Fanny, even though you cannot see. Shortly after the visit to New York, Mercy went to work for another family. Fanny and her mother had to move, but Fanny really missed her grandmother, the woods and the horseback rides in the fields with Polly. Grandmother occasionally traveled the six miles to see Fanny several times a week, and Fanny often went back to visit grandmother. As Fanny grew older, Grandma read more and more of the Bible to her. Each week, Fanny memorized parts Grandmother assigned. She learned so quickly. When Fanny was eight years old, one day she said, Grandma, I wrote a poem this week. I want you to hear it. This is how it goes. Oh, what a happy child I am, although I cannot see. I am resolved that in this world, contented I will be. How many blessings I enjoy that other people don't. To weep or sigh because I'm blind, I cannot and I won't. That is wonderful, Fanny, said Grandmother, and Fanny could hear that she was pleased. God has given you a good mind. Always use it for him. A while later, Fanny and her mother Mercy had to move again. This time, it was even farther away. While Mercy worked as a housekeeper for a wealthy family, Fanny stayed with their landlady. Mrs. Holly often took Fanny into the garden. Fanny enjoyed naming the flowers as she felt each one. Mrs. Holly, I smell roses, Fanny exclaimed one day. Yes, Fanny, come, I'll show you my prized white roses. Then I'll listen to you say the chapters of the Bible you've learned. Fanny reached out to touch the soft petals. Ouch! I'm glad all flowers don't have thorns, she said as she rubbed her finger. I hope those thorns will keep people from cutting down my roses, Mrs. Holly replied. I prize these roses more than any other flowers. After going into the house, Mrs. Holly sat in a chair, her much-read Bible and a book of poetry on her lap. Fanny stood before her and recited five chapters from Genesis that she had memorized that week. Then, just as grandmother had done, 
Mrs. Holly read and explained five more chapters. By the end of the first year, Fanny knew all of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, as well as Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's eight books of the Bible. Fanny often sat alone thinking of the poems Mrs. Holly had read or the Bible chapter she was to memorize. When Fanny heard the laughing voices of children returning home from school, she sighed sadly. Will I ever learn like other children? Fanny had gone to school several times, but the school teacher did not have time to teach her, so Fanny stayed home. More determined than ever, Fanny memorized all that she heard. I'll show everyone what a blind girl can do, she thought. In Sunday school contests, Fanny quoted the longest and most difficult verses she knew, and she always won the prize. As the months passed, Mercy noticed her daughter Fanny was often sad. She knew that her young daughter, soon to be 12, was frustrated because she could not go to school. Mercy was amazed at the poems Fanny could write, how she wished Fanny could go to school. One night, during a visit to her grandmother, Fanny mentioned again her desire to learn. As Grandma always did when there was a problem, she knelt with Fanny by the old rocking chair and prayed aloud. After Grandmother had left, Fanny felt her way over to the open window. Through her scarred eyes, she could see a faint light. The moon was shining. Quietly, Fanny prayed, Dear God, please show me how I can learn and be like other children. The sadness Fanny had felt slowly went away. She did not know how she would learn, but she knew God would answer in his own perfect time. When Fanny next visited, grandmother was ill. God is going to call me home soon, she told Fanny. She hushed, hushed Fanny's sobbing to whisper a question. Will you meet me in heaven someday? There was a pause. Then Fanny answered with a knot in her throat. By the grace of God, I will, Grandma. But Fanny only said this to comfort her Grandma. She had never come to God as a sinner and believed in him. As Grandmother hugged Fanny, she said, Keep memorizing God's word. He will show you his plan. God has something special for you. And God has something in special for each one of you listening to this story today. Put your trust in him and he will use you to share his goodness and love to the world around you. Thank you for listening.